stage used guar pieces on my channel? More likely than you may think. guys, so today we're going to be having a look at a few very, very special guar pieces, some stage used and some not. So let's go ahead and get right into this video. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not AJ Good. No, no, I'm not. Who told you you could review guar items? Well, nobody told me I could, but I thought since this is America and all, I would have the free rights to just do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to tell me next? That you're making a Patreon account? Oh, brother. Alright guys, on a serious note, today I am joined by my good friend Gavin Harden, longtime Guar fan and collector. He's going to show us a few pieces from his Guar collection. Did you see that guy over there? He was a dick. What a fucking asshole. Yeah, right. Gives pretty good head, though. It does give a good head, though. Gives pretty good head. So what are we talking about? Guar stuff? Guar stuff. Guar stuff. We're going to talk about some Guar props today. I got a bunch of Guar stuff, uh, mostly t-shirts, prints, autograph stuff, but we're going to talk about some of the more interesting stuff, like this is a medallion here with terrible light balance. Mojo. Yeah. Mr. Mojo Rising. This, um, this mojo I got from uh, Davis Bradley from the Slave Pit a while back. I had actually messaged him, like, maybe been like four or five years ago now I was like hey man I, was, I know you guys are planning to re-release the mojos and this was when they were talking of uh, releasing the new ones that you can buy through Karate the silver ones that are sixty dollars or whatever the totally different sculpt I had asked him uh, if there was any way that I could get an original sculpt mojo because obviously when you look at pictures of the bands they're not wearing the new fucking mojos that look like cool but they're not this this is like pretty much the refined version of the original ones that if you're familiar they used to give out on uh, mind control monthly in the back of their little uh comic zines they looked like hammered dog shit if uh people have any of those you can go check them out on facebook and look they're seriously terrible i'll try so, to put a couple pictures of them on screen so they can get a good idea of what the originals look like what are you some kind of professional youtuber yeah i am well, uh, this is the refined version of the sculpt, and I wanted one of these. I didn't want one of the new sculpts, and of course, I was like, hey man, is there any way I could get one of those old bojos, and if possible, uh, a red one that's not uh, silver or gold, if you're a sleazy fan or whatever, uh, and he sends me a picture, and he goes, like this? And it's this mojo, and I'm like, yeah, and he was like, this is one that I had laying around already, and um, I'm not sure exactly what the story was on it, but he had had this one at the pit and I hit him up and I bought it from him at the time. And when I got it, I was super surprised too, because not only did shipping cost an arm and a leg, but it's super heavy. Like this thing is crazy. What they do is they actually do a silicone mold and then they cast the front half of the medallion and then the chains, as you can see, come straight out of the resin itself they actually lay the chains from bone to bone in an x-shaped fashion so you'll notice a lot of the time odoruses and ball sacks um medallions will be like broken the bottom bone will be broken and just dangling there the reason it doesn't fall off is because it has that chain embedded but these guys are like super heavy duty thick resin you know, I like sick. these old ones so much more than the new ones, too. Me I think too. that design is just so much cooler. It really is. It's got, like, it's almost like a Hunter Jackson drawing jumped off the page with these fine lines and the layers of the eye and everything and the blockiness of the teeth, whereas the new one is clearly Matt McGuire's artwork. And another subtle difference that I noticed, we probably should have busted out the other mojo that we have, the chains are also different. These chains are uh, longer and more slender, whereas the new ones are just more round and beefy. But this was the uh, the first piece I got from the pit, and uh, I've had it for years now, and it's not leaving me. It's one of my favorites because, obviously, it has a super personal collection to me because it's uh, odorous. All right, the next piece we're going to talk about is uh, my 
Sexicutioner mask that I got from Chuck Varga. Now I'm pretty sure a bunch of you guys have seen these. Chuck Varga has the mold for these. He does make these and uh, this is one of the most common masks that people own from Guar because it, for a while there, Chuck was almost like, he was advertising these and trying to make some money off of these uh, several years ago. And he also had another sculpt that was the Sexicutioner not in bondage. I'm assuming you'll have a picture of it up. Um, it's it's crazy. I like it. It's really cool. But it, for me, it's weird because it's like he never wore this look on stage. So I never bought one of those. I wanted one of these masks for a while because uh, Sexicutioner is without a doubt one of my favorite guar characters of all time like odorous and sexicutioner to me are just like the coolest and uh so it was at the time when he had just started going in and uh for treatment on his uh cancer and everything and with all his medical issues that he's dealing with and so like when he messaged me he was like 500 bucks and i was like that's not a bad deal that's what they roughly go for if you were looking into getting one of these from him it's uh 500 for the mask and then i, I believe he offers a shoulder piece that goes with it that's also 500 so a grand for the two and um it's it's they're not stage used or anything but they're handmade by the man himself it's not like you're getting an odorous mask that's pulled by matt and finished by margaret you're getting a piece from sexy himself if you will right from the actual yeah. character exactly that's what's super cool about it to me and um i i was like i don't care i'm doing it i'm buying it and uh i need it because executioner is my favorite so he um he personalized it to me on the head which is super hard to see because it's all faded and i'll get some other shots and throw those in for purple you guys ink and everything and um the like the second that i got this piece i realized like it's it's so hard to describe like I'm sure you guys are watching AJ's videos and you guys have probably seen obviously Mr. Tree Fitty, Black Hole Pockets, the legend, the Loch Ness Monster, Nick Samino on Facebook and the other guys in the Guar Museum. Um, there's something that watching these videos just really doesn't cut with Guar props and that's that these things right here are real deal. Like, Guar is outer space barbarians. They're drunk, overweight men stumbling around on stage in these things. Like, it's, it's crazy for somebody who's watching this video right now to be like, oh, that's so sick, sick, executioner mask. But, like, until you hold one of these, this thing is like a basketball. Like, it's super fucking thick. Like, if ridiculous. I could get a shot of the inside, we'll get a picture of that. It's just like he dwelled it and just left it for like a week. That's something that I've noticed with every Guar prop that I've seen is that they're thick, they're heavy, and they're gigantic. So if you're somebody out there who's, for whatever reason, trying to create your own Guar costume or trying to replicate something, because I know obviously Guar is kind of hot right now, um... People are, you know, be like, oh, I want to dress up like Odorous. I want to do an Odorous. You know, it's the most common thing ever. And then they get halfway through the costume and they're like, oh, shit, this is hard as fuck. You know, because that's how it is. It's, it it's takes, happened to me two or yeah, three times. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it's happened to everybody who's at least a casual Guar fan. They're like, man, that'd be sick. And then you try to make some shoulder pads and then you end up looking like a fool standing there in fishnets. <laughs> so, like, it's crazy they do it right like they do it huge they do it massive like a lot of people have the problem of they make their stuff too small like they'll be like oh i'm gonna make some shoulder pads or i'm gonna make a cuttlefish or some odorous feet or something and then like you're like okay that's cool but it's small like if you'll notice like dave's gauntlets come all the way up like almost past his elbows and like his legs come up to his knees you know and everything they wear is just massive massive legend. Yep, there's a famous uh, photo out there of uh, Dave without the shoulder pads on mm -hmm. the one that we were talking about last night uh, And it really shows how big the odorous mask is and how because for normal mask collectors You you, you want to compare it to a normal mask, but it's not a normal what right. mask. It's their armor You know what I mean? And I think one of the reasons for that and one of the reasons Guar stuff is so cool is because this is just self-made like these guys yeah. aren't technically skilled with mask making they just taught themselves <laughs> how to make this shit and if you bring this mask just a little bit closer to the camera one of my favorite things about this particular style of sex executioner is how uneven the eyebrows are like the placement of them is super asymmetrical like if you look at it up close it's not symmetrical whatsoever a lot of the details for masks like guars really comes down to the paint really defining it 
because the sculptures are just so basic and amateur, but they look awesome. Yeah, like you can tell here, like if this was something that you bought from a collector, like without a doubt, uh, Connor DeLess, perfect, clean Hollywood style work. That's not what Guar's all about. And there's the seam line on the head here is just like blown out and there's air bubbles in them. And it's, it's crazy because he's so thick, like this hairdo here is solid, but then right in the silver collar here, there's like a little air bubble but then it goes back to being solid. So like, you can't stick your thumb up into the hair. It's just solid, the hair is. And uh, same thing with the ears, they're mostly solid. All of these cheek pieces right here are pretty much solid. And this mask weighs a ton. And I'm not joking when I say that the, just the scalp alone on this guy is probably an inch thick. Like the first time I put it on, it's like a helmet. Like you can take some sword wax to the head with this guy. Wearing something like this on stage is probably the most uncomfortable thing you could imagine putting yourself through. And these guys do it every single night. Every single night. <laughs> on tour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's like... At the same time, like you don't have time after every show. It's not like some of these bands who don't play on every night tours like this. Like you don't have time to stop and disinfect your costumes. You get done with the venue, you throw them in a costume box, you lock them up, and you go to the next show and you open them up and they smell like beer, dead sweat, dog. And piss. Yeah. Speaking of dead dogs, yeah, we should probably get into this. This is the latest score. Ah. It's pooky. So obviously. If you guys are watching this video, you at least think you know something about Guar. So, where better to start than their first album, obviously. One of my favorite albums to date. I love it because they recorded the whole album in costume in somebody's apartment. <laughs> and we're not even going to start on how much that ordeal was. The whole shimmy disc thing. The whole Fuck getting screwed disc. over and everything. Like... That album is super special though, because it's like you can hear sirens in the background, and they've recorded it in New York, just like in an apartment. Like it's there's pictures from that as well. It's like Balsack, he's got all the cables in his mouth, and he's just they're they're doing it all in costume. And this is very primitive, early Brocky, back when he used to have just the head scalp piece and stuff, and super formative years for them, which is my favorite era of Guar, without a doubt. I know everybody has their own thing for Guar. Some people like the the flattest. Uh, solos and the and the newer stuff and the and the actually like super appreciable like talented technical side of technical things. metal yeah like it very good music and and very good performance and story driven things and uh, lots of good stuff has come out of the band over the years if you know look past all the stupid stuff like master has a butt <clears throat> we kill everything which I love we kill everything because it has a little charm to me but um. It's one of the situations where, to me, what's appealing about Guar is back when they used to hand make all their shit and get out in the crowd and then it all get destroyed. And then the next show, they're like, oh, well, I guess we got to remake Cardinal Sin because he got his head kicked in last night because he's paper mache and chicken wire. <laughs> you know, like, because I feel that. Like, I know what that feels like to work really hard on something and then bring it to a show and then it just get demolished. And that's just a really good, it, it sucks sometimes, but then at the same time, it's like, you gotta, dude, let it dwell for fucking a week if you're Guar. Yeah. <laughs> like, you let it dwell for a week, you coat it with five gallons of latex, and then maybe it'll survive a Guar tour and end up in somebody's collection <laughs> years later. That do-it-yourself attitude is definitely what has made Guar so popular with a lot of people, and myself especially, because that shit got destroyed, and they were like, all right, guess we gotta patch it back up and keep going. Yeah, that's what's a genius idea about the whole punk rock puppet thing with Green Jello, too, is that, like, if something tears or rips, duct tape. It's already made out of duct tape. Just repair it with duct tape. But you lose a certain bit of quality, and that's what I love about Guar is that the the old school craft that goes, they still keep the latex and couch cushion thing going after all these years. Because obviously, you know, in Green Jello, they would do the, the foam and couch cushions and, and the cheesecloth, which is... A really cool method, actually, because the cheesecloth reinforces it. You're almost, I treat it like paper mache. You're right. essentially taking strips of cheesecloth, dipping it in the latex, and just... Very similar methods, yeah, layering like, now, it on if there. If you're, if you're an early mask maker and you're trying to watch these videos, you're watching AJ and you're watching Douglas and you're watching people like Nico who needs to upload a video, um, 
then you'll, you're thinking like, oh yeah, I want to get into this. You know, I want to try to do my own mask, whether it's Slipknot inspired, Guar inspired, whatever inspires you to create something. That's the one main piece of advice that I think you should take from Guar is that do it right. You know, don't be afraid to use your latex. Like I know latex is expensive. I know that's the one thing that holds people back is just pulling the trigger and ordering that like $60, $70 gallon bucket from Monster Makers or wherever you want to order your latex from, you know, and, and doing it right is the main hurdle for people. And I say that like, don't hold back on it, man. I mean, like you want to, you want to make your shit thick and you want to make your stuff last because 10 years from now, when all your masks are rotten and destroyed, you have nothing to show for it, but a couple pictures, you know, and like, you, it's one of those things that like you just learn to don't skip up on the latex. Guar stuff was heavily abused, covered in fucking blood, sweat, vomit, piss, everything you can imagine every single night on tour. And those pieces are still around, period. Uh, still around. Much less intact. <laughs> yeah, right. Something like this being fully intact this old is amazing. Yeah, this guy was made by Hunter Jackson, hand sculpted out of foam. Or should I say this gal? Um, this was made by Hunter Jackson in roughly 2000 to 2001. It was used on the 2001 Guarnage Campaign DVD, which is um, a collection of live shows that they did at the time. They do uh, I'm in Love with a Dead Dog, and obviously Sexcutioner comes out with this bad boy right here, and they proceed to ejaculate into her mouth with P, a little P, a little cum, a little P, a little cum, no it's P, now it's a little cum, and uh, it's super cool, like watching these clips back, like when I had the opportunity to get this, uh, I was like, man this is crazy, It's it looks big, you know, it looks alright, but then like I got it in the mail and I was like, oh my god, like, that's another thing too, like I'd say like people don't understand how big and how tough Guar props are. Like this executioner, when he's wearing that mask and he's when he's wearing those gauntlets and everything, like it increases his size, like it makes him big so he dwarfs this little dog and it still looks big when he's holding it. Right, all their props have to be made larger to scale with their costume. Exactly, and that's another cool thing too is that it's so whimsical and it's so crazy, you know, that, to have these big props. And um... So this was used by the executioner, made by Hunter Jackson. This was around that time period. This is actually right before Hunter Jackson started. Uh, you want me to hold it while you show it off? Yeah, yeah. Here you go. And um, Pookie here was made with uh, couch cushions, good old fashioned way. Turkey carver, I'm assuming, some kind of electric knife. If you flip her around, you can see the back of her. Uh, she is a whole love seat, probably. So you can see here. There's this line. So the whole body here and the back leg and the tail and all of that is just one big flat cushion. If you'll get the profile now, you can see that bottom cushion here and then what they've added on top. And then another cool thing about her is, um, if you guys are familiar, uh, I love the, the, uh, the, like just the mindset when they made this guy, like, oh, we've got this, which I can only assume is from something like uh, the Marilyn Manson skin suit mold. This is a super thick piece too. It's not thin, they're not skimping. This is thicker than most masks that I've purchased. Just this one casted piece of muscle here and they just slapped it on there to give her muscle. A better example here is how that they've covered the entire foot with the whole musculature sculpture just to give her an extra little bit of detail. Another cool little thing I like is um, on her back here, she's got some vertebra that's clearly casted from a different mold and it's just contorted in there. And when you're looking at this thing in person, like you can see where it's not glued down all the way, you can see up on her, it's just a latex cast from a mold. You know, they brushed it in, they hit it with a dryer, maybe put some cheesecloth in it. And of course you can't go wrong with the good old tendrils and everything. That One they of have the most classic, everything. iconic Guar looks. Especially for Hunter. Because, I mean, you know this is a piece made by Hunter, and he just, he puts, the, anywhere he gets a chance to put these, he puts them, and I, I don't blame them. They're so sick. And um, they really add to the overall appearance of it. One of the things I love about this prop so much is just the, the handcraftedness of it. Like, in her eye here, you can see where the cheesecloth is exposed we'll try to get some better shots of that and on the inside of the mouth there's like exposed foam and it's just like 
it this thing don't get me wrong has probably got five gallons or more of latex on it for sure like the whole top layer and even this back area is it's pretty solid latex like it's not skimped out that's one thing i hate about making foam latex props is it's almost like that you brush one layer of latex on it, it just disappears you're just painting a sponge with your expensive rubber you know well this cheesecloth method and everything like it, it helps because it builds it, a skin yeah ex essentially it builds a skin and also a layer of reinforcement so even though this thing is covered with so much latex there's still open spots like on her back here down here on the leg there's actually a piece of foam just like sticking out right there and uh that's just straight couch cushion foam so i mean obviously there's little things like that and like her toes aren't coated all the way you know if you were to try to take the couch cushion and put a couple layers of latex on it you'd probably get something like this down here that's on her toes and uh it's just really cool like the second that i received this thing i looked it over for hours and i was i could just see every little detail in it everything that's happened to it the eyes are stained yellow from what i can only assume is spew on a nightly basis from odorous as cuttlefish and super cool I'm super thankful that I was able to get this thing too because um, a buddy of mine who's a private collector who's been in the game for a really long time now, uh, I I was talking to him back and forth about uh, purchasing a piece of Dave Brocky's artwork because uh, I'm, I'm an artist and Dave is obviously without a doubt the person who inspired me to become the artist I am today. And so like... I was trying to get an original from him. I was specifically looking for something small, like a, uh, if you're familiar, Dave found a box of old Death Piggy 45s forever ago, and he would go to Walmart and buy uh, craft things like puffy paint and washable markers and crayons and colored pencils, and he would color on the jackets, the sleeves, and sell them to people. And he did this for a long time. He pumped out a lot of these things. If you actually go to the website that I'm so glad is even still up, odorous.com. There's so much good stuff on that. If you just click on the chick's tongue to see the rest of the page and go to the piggy page, you can see most of them that he's got. I know that uh, there's a guy named Joe Victory. He owns a crap ton of them, and they're all super nice pieces. But I was able to get some from uh, my buddy Chris, and we made a deal on that. And then he showed me some of the stuff he had, and I was... Just talking to him, you know, and we went back and forth, and we made a deal on the Pookie, and I'm not rich. I, like, I mean, I'm struggling. I, I barely am able to pay the bills. Like, I mean, I work a crappy job. I'm surprised I'm able to keep in the hobby how I am. That's why, like, you may not see me that often. I may not see stuff, because I'm not just, like, constantly doing stuff. I'm not trying to pump out content. I just do it because I'm passionate about it, and I love it. But one thing that I am super proud of is the fact that everything I do buy, every mask I buy, every prop I buy, this medallion right here, this executioner mask, even this Pookie, my latest purse, has been from sales off of my art, which wouldn't have even been here if it wasn't for Dave, if it wasn't for Chuck, if it wasn't for Hunter, if it wasn't for all of these artists inspiring me. But um, now to have something like this and have these videos like even AJ's been putting out and, and uh, if you follow like Nick on Facebook, he owns a lot of the stuff and you can see these props up close. Like if you're a big Guar fan like me and you, and you obsess over this all day and you, and you scroll through the TDV and you, and you look through the freaking Phallus in Wonderland a thousand times and watch all the YouTube videos and interviews and stuff, you're scrutinizing every little pixel of these things, trying to look at the details. And there's nothing quite better than just seeing some up close shots of the real deal with the high quality cameras that we have available on the market today. So people like me and you that are making this content, not only for people who are just like interested to see it, we're not just like, hey, check out what we got. This is content. It's like you can see it up close. You can see the details. You can see every little thing that I wish I was able to see when recreating some of my old props. Like, dude, if somebody could just like find the odorous mask that was in Phallus in Wonderland that's like totally missing and nobody knows where it's at. It's rotting to pieces somewhere. That mask, like if I could get super close detail shots, like even like AJ was just able to get with his recent score, this executioner mask that he had, seeing that up close and seeing every little detail, every little crack and rot in the latex and the couch foam sticking out. I love that stuff, man. And it really helps you 
better yourself and learn from it, you know, because it's, it's so hard when you you're watching these. You can see how these, they made it. Yeah. When you're watching these Guar videos, it's low light. They're on stage. It's covered in blood. The camera quality is awful. Shit's getting tumbled around and, everywhere. Yeah, and my... Ah, King Ghidorah's trying to attack me. My favorite era of Guar is the dim times, early era, pre phallus There goes that spider carrying a fly again. And um, that stuff is just really crappy camera quality. It's really hard to see, and so... This is something cool that now people are able to see. All right, well, is there anything you want to plug before we get out of here, Gavin? Yeah, yeah, speaking of the art that helped me purchase this, if you guys would like to pick it up, I got several black and white prints, all kinds of guar stuff, but I have a ball sack on a pile of skulls print that I worked super hard on that is uh, supposed to go hand in hand with the MF Gallery odors on a pile of skulls print. And uh, I offer them in two ways. I offer them with the uh, puff paint border and uh, just the print. So if you want to hit me up and get one of those prints off of me, it will definitely be used for something sick and war related. But yeah, um, if you guys want to pick something up like that, that would be super awesome. You can hit me up on Facebook, Gavin Harden, or uh, Instagram, Darksmoor's War Games. Look for the little deaf piggy, you know. And. Uh, Support me by buying some art or whatever, you know. Support artists. Support your artist friends. Ah, support your local fartists. Nobody ever supports artists. They're like, hey, man, this is cool. Cool, you want to buy one? Oh, no. Hey, man, I like this. Can I have one? Yeah, yeah, what's up? Hit me up, ghosted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Unfortunately, it'd be like that sometimes. Yep, yep, that's how it is. All right, guys, well, I think that about does it for this video. I'll be sure to give you guys some more close-ups. And, Gavin, thank you so much for being here today and showing us some of these very fucking awesome war pieces. Yeah, no problem, man. I just like, uh... <laughs>